You're listening to Templin Institute Radio, bringing you smooth live beats as we await for the countdown.
Hello, folks, and welcome back to the Orion Arm. I am Mark, the man behind the curtain, and today we're back to developing the Dawn of Victory star map for our original science fiction setting. It's been a while. We were supposed to have only a one-week break, but uh, as I mentioned at the start of the year here, I've had some issues with my lungs and my brain, but uh, I'm on some new medication now that I think is actually working. It's been a while since I've had problems talking, so I think we're on the right track. The problem is... Now I'm throwing up all the time, so uh, <laughs> if I leave suddenly in the middle of the stream, that's what's going on. It's just as I'm getting used to this new stuff they put me on, so that's what's going on. But uh, yeah, let's get into this. So this is half podcast, half world building session, half casual hangout. The idea is I'm just building the star map, putting on star systems, naming them, figuring out pathways, developing geopolitics, doing all this stuff. So that's the plan anyways. We'll see how it goes. I think uh, the average Templin stream goes about 30 seconds before something goes wrong. So I think we're already past that. I don't want to jinx it. So maybe we jump in here. I will be answering questions as they come up over the course of the stream. Priority will be given to Super Chats, but uh, I think if you're here, you know the drill by now. And what to start with? I already see uh, one thing in the comments here that I got to remember how to do stuff for. Here we go. Or did the button not work? Damn it. Well, that sucks. All right, well, let me just highlight this. What part of the map is going to be revealed? So the idea is, uh, every four or five streams or so, we're gonna reveal a small part of the map. Nothing nothing huge like last time, where we unveiled the entire sea of clouds. But this time, let's do it right at the start, since someone is asking and waiting for it. We are going to be, uh, where is it actually? Yeah, this section here uh, is called the New Canaan Corridor. And we've been developing one side of it here, aptly named New, Can New Canaan. And the idea is this section here is like a big trade corridor. It's kind of what links the Dwanga Deeps and the local cluster and the Sea of Clouds to the uh, Empire of Japan, which is over there. So let's zoom in and reveal. Kablam! That is the New Canaan Corridor. And let's uh, put that... Uh, it's gonna lock down, shall we? And then I'll keep the screen on it so you can actually see it. New Canaan Corridor. Probably spelled correctly, we'll see. Yeah. So just a little section of the map, but one of my favorite sections. Uh, for those of you who remember DOV classic lore, the New Canaan Corridor was an important part, and now it finally looks cool. And to give you an extra hint of what lays beyond, uh, this section here, this is where if you're looking for like a fight, <laughs> if you're writing a story in this universe and you need it set in a war, this is probably where it's going to take place, as this has been a major combat zone basically since the evacuation of Earth. But I'm already getting ahead of myself. Let's actually start with an overview of the whole thing. So, uh, last session... We worked mainly on, I want to say, the Dwanga Deeps. We added a bunch of star systems down here, including the Republic of Turkey. Uh, we added some more around here. I did a little work um, off stream, but I'm thinking I'm going to do more and more on stream and not do as much off, just because I'm thinking that too much world building stuff is getting lost uh, off these streams, and I'm not explaining enough. So that's, that's kind of the thinking. So... One area I added, and I can't remember if I did this on stream or off, but uh, this to me feels like a pirate area, and I'm calling it the Golden Horn until I can think of something better. Not sure why, but uh, it sounds good. Also worked on the Well of Embers. I think I talked about that. We added a bunch of these. Wait, is that uh, is there one missing there? Let's see what's going on. It looks like there should be a star system right there. Okay, fixed. Crisis averted. And the idea here is that these dotted lines represent places where the cosmic strings linking all the star systems together aren't as strong, and transit is a little unpredictable. So we're going to be adding a lot of these sections across the map here. We got another one in the deeps, and we'll probably be expanding on that later on. So, what else to talk about? Normally, I would start these streams by going over how FTL works, but I've done that enough already. And I feel like we got a pretty good explanation. So instead of that, if you'll forgive me, we'll save that for next stream. Instead, what I'm going to do is something different. And I'm going to explain the geopolitics that I've been developing mostly in my head uh, for this part of the map. But before we do that, let's go to the old work screen, shall we? 
Okay. Whoops, and that's why that wasn't working. I finally figured it out. Okay, so let's talk geopolitics. Uh, how do I do this? All right, so... We need to go back in time a bit. At the start of the colonization effort, as we've said, um, there was a couple different routes out of here. Uh, the Americans tend to went this way. The Soviets went this way. The Japanese kind of went down here. And the Germans went up here. And everyone else just kind of got stuck wherever they ended up. So India is there, South America over here. But in addition to all these major powers that were able to get off Earth relatively intact, there was also a bunch of countries that for whatever reason just didn't make it through the Synfaxi War. And there was a lot of displaced peoples. And where are they going to go? Well, one of the places they went to was a little star system called Vega. Vega was kind of on the way to the German Reich, so the cosmic strings were really well developed. There was a few habitable planets right off the bat, which made it easy. So Vega becomes one of the biggest independent colonies in the early days of the colonization era. And it's competing and almost surpassing Alpha Centauri, which is wild, because Alpha Centauri has the support of all the superpowers, whereas Vega is just this colony that kind of is just there. And part of the reason why Vega was such a success story is because of this unique kind of philosophy slash ideology that developed called vegan nationalism. Vegan nationalism, it was more of just a rejection of the status quo that the superpowers are trying to establish. The United States, the British, the Soviets, the Germans, they had a very distinct idea of what the local cluster was going to look like. And it was basically all these independent colonies like Vega, Alpha Centauri, Sirius, Tau Ceti, they really only exist to support the superpowers, right? Whereas the people living on these colonies, Sirius, Alpha, Centauri, Vega, not a huge fan of that. So, Vega launches a war trying to... I don't want to get too much into this, just because we're going to be describing some of this in future lore videos. But the idea was, um, Vega saw where the, where the path was taking them. And they figure, if they don't upset what's going on here within the next 20 years, the Americans and the Soviets are going to be able to get back into the local cluster and really enforce their will. But there's this little grace period where, you know, the Americans are too focused in the Sea of Clouds, the Germans are over here, and no one's paying attention to the, the local cluster. So the Vega, they, they make their move, and that's all I'm really going to hint at right now. So that's uh, kind of what's going on in the local cluster. Actually, I just got to provide a bit more detail because that doesn't get us up to the current date. So, all right, Vega makes their move. It doesn't go well. Uh, they're invaded split apart, and now Vega is two Vegas, split between uh, a USSR puppet state on this side and a GGR puppet state on this side. And I think we've said that there's nine places in the Orion arm where the Cold War might go hot, and if the smart money is what you're betting on, then smart money's on Vega. That's where shit's probably gonna go down. Maybe. Who can say for sure? But once Vega was kind of crushed, the local cluster, it, it, it's not trying to uh, attain those same heights again. No one in the local cluster is trying to really upset the balance of power. Instead, it's kind of devolved into a cold war within a cold war between India and Brazil. So I think that's the, the basic geopolitics going on. We got a confrontation here, a confrontation here, and the lost glory of Vega intertwined throughout all of it. So hopefully that gives you a somewhat uh, rough idea of what's going on here. Okay, so, as for what we're going to work on uh, this stream, I got a couple ideas. First, I want to start going through all these independent star systems and actually name them. I was going to do this off stream, but it just felt like too much important stuff was happening when no one was seeing it. So, that was the idea there. And let's actually add that back because the project got a little messed up when I was consolidating everything. All right, so... As we go along here, by the way, linked in chat just now is our star systems master list. This is a spreadsheet with um, all the star systems currently on the map, as well as suggestions for star system names that anyone might have. And one of those tabs there is for our independent star systems, where, you know, all these suckers. And we have gotten, I mean, how many suggestions did we get? We are up to 716 suggestions. I've been going through them slowly and trying to remove the ones that I don't feel fit, but for the most part, 
I, I feel like people really get what we're trying to what, what the naming convention is going to be like. And at the start of the stream, speaking of Vega, I want to add another bounty to this uh, master list of star systems. If you're unfamiliar, bounties are little, well, I guess they're just bounties you put out for name suggestions. And this one's a little different, so pay attention. What we're looking for here, and someone who is currently running the uh, <clears throat> the spreadsheet will need to make sure they update this while I'm talking. Thank you for that, by the way, whoever is doing it. I need naming suggestions for, I guess, a theme? A theme of what Vegan star system should be named. Because right now, I've added these random names, and I don't like it. I feel like this has no personality. Like, you can't tell... Like, I, I don't know. It feels too it feels too random. So I'm thinking that Vega, once they kind of established their interstellar empire, they came up with some naming convention. They're like, we're, we're going to name all our star systems after this. I don't know what that is, but... Um, yeah, let me know your suggestions. So, I, I to give you maybe a starting point, we're thinking of things that have to do with torches and fire, and that's kind of vague in symbolism, is, is the torch. But how does that translate to names? I'm not sure. Do we name all the star systems after fire gods? I have no idea. One idea I saw on that independent star systems list, maybe I can actually bring it on here, let's see. Uh, what do we got? Yeah, this should work, right? So, among the... Oh man, is that actually going to be readable on stream? Sorry, I know that our resolution's not that great. Maybe I won't do that. But someone suggested um, Babylonian names for constellations. So, the constellation Leo, for example, is named Urgulu in Babylonian. So, maybe there's something there where all these star systems are named after the Babylonian names for constellations. I'm not sure if I love that specifically, but that's kind of the theme we're looking for here. So, if you have an idea of what vague and star systems should be named after, uh, let me know. And, uh, hopefully someone has... Yes, yeah, someone's already added it to the bounty. So, there is another link in the description just in case you missed it. Alright, so that's all the house... No, that's not all the housekeeping because, in addition to the stream, we also put out a quick update video on the Dawn of Victory channel today. Uh, just going over, you know, what's been taking so long. It's been almost two months since our last uh, lore video. And basically what happened is we got a lot of feedback and I got some new ideas on how to make those videos look better. So talking about that, we've also announced our new major world building project. We've teamed up with uh, the artist Ian Lawrence Gibney and the YouTube channel Battle Order to do some really fun stuff creating essentially military forces in this setting. So if you want to know more about that, check out the YouTube channel. All right, I'm going to... Stop talking. Actually, I'm going to take a drink. Good lord, I talk too much. Ah, good stuff. So just a reminder, for that Vegan Star Systems, we're not looking for individual names, maybe, more so just the theme. And if you want to provide examples of names that work within that theme, that works too. But, let's get to this area here. The new Canaan Corridor. Now, the idea here is we got Turkey on the south, and I wanted another power to kind of be in the north here. I was thinking possibly a member of the uh, greater uh, Asia co-prosperity sphere, possibly like Cambodia, Vietnam, maybe Thailand. I'm, I'm not sure, just, just part of the sphere uh, a little closer to the local cluster so they have an active presence, because right now they're, they're missing entirely. That was one thought, so let me know what you think about that. But I want to start first on these independent star system names. So I'm going to bring up that uh, that list of names from the independent bounty. And if you want to start throwing stuff out in chat, I'm going to do a better job of paying attention to it. Last time on the stream, I had a can of Coca-Cola in the freezer, and I told chat to tell me when 20 minutes had gone by so I could take it out of the freezer. And then I ended up answering questions while the 20 minute timer went off. Didn't see chat going absolutely crazy telling me to rescue the coke, but it all worked out. So I, I did eventually see all those messages. Thanks to everyone who was trying to keep me honest. But uh, all right. So independent star system names. I've been rambling on here. What are we thinking? Uh, we need stuff related to um, to Turkey and the Ottomans. I feel like the people who were getting through this part of space first we're probably from Asia, the Middle East, that kind of area. So for this area, so what did I just do? For this area specifically, I'm thinking not many Western sounding names. 
So I'm literally, I got on my other screen here, um, this list of star systems, and I'm just going to start running through it. And please let me know what you think. In fact, I might just have the... Uh, I'm going to start uh, popping up names that are good here. What do we got? What do we got? Apparently nothing yet. All right, never mind. I'm going to turn that off. This is fine. I'm just worried now that, like, unless there's nothing on the screen, is it going to look like I'm not doing anything? I guess I'll put this on. Magellan. I'm looking for Turkish. Turkish. Nepali for shield. Nepali for shield. Nepal. <clears throat> yeah. Dala. That seems like a good one. I like Dala. So how do I mark that I've, like, used this? I was going to do... I had a way. I had a... I had a wait. Fill color. There we go. Beauty. All right, Dala, let's go. Let's add it. Uh, probably not one of the main systems. I don't think any Nepalese explorers were getting on the main routes, but maybe like, whoops, Dala. Why is that D so thin? Dala, all right, there we go. <clears throat> one down, many more to go. Okay, actually, can I do this? Yeah, there we are. God, I'm a master at computers. Okay, okay, what do we got? Uh, Hattusha was the capital of the ancient Hittites of what is now Turkey. Okay, yeah, that uh, that is a good one. Let's uh, Let's get that in there. And thank you very much for the Super Chats. I have been seeing them. I will get to them uh, in our first break here. Very much appreciated. For now, though, the, uh, the non-Super Chats shall inherit the Earth. So, hmm. Hittites. Let's, let's make these independent for now. Let's keep this one here. And I think the plan is, I just want to get these names down, and then I'm going to go back and kind of... I don't know, we might need to like revise these or move them around, but for now I just want to get these names on here. So we're not wasting uh, a lot of time. Uh, Kalkin is the Turkish word for shield. Shield, shield, shield. Huh, that's interesting. Kalkin, Kalkin. I'm going to add that to my list. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's, let's put that on there. Kalkin. Shield. So, is the idea that the system is a shield, or was there a bit of nebula in the system that kind of looked like a shield? I think the latter. I don't think that Turkey would name an entire star system just because it's strategically, you know, important or whatever. So, shield. Anything around here kind of look like a shield? Maybe, maybe there's something in there. I don't know, maybe there's something in here. Kalkin. All right, what do we else do we got here? And if you're gonna suggest uh, names in chat, please include the etymology too, um, just so I can look this up later and make sure that people aren't just lying to me. Uh, so someone else said, <clears throat> someone else said Hattusha, and I quite like the sound of it. I do too, let me know the etymology of that one. The Curtis system. I don't remember the language, but it stands for physical activity. Oh, get me the language and I'll consider it. Batman. Well, obviously, the capital of Turkey is going to be called Batman. Kebab. Uh, I don't know about that one. Also, I saw some folks uh, recommending Kadia. I don't know about that. Probably get sued. Any other names? Gotta have Istanbul. Blybos, Phoenician city. Yeah, I kind of like that as a, um, like a port, port kind of star system. Like the gateway to the, whatever this area of the map is. By Blos. Okay, what else is on our list here? <clears throat> Caribbean islands, Irish names, no. No. 
Name of a Byzantine priest. Hmm. Ruma is Malay for home. Might need to put that somewhere else in the map then, because home wouldn't necessarily be what you'd want to call a star system that's, you know, not your home. But I like that, I like where your head's at. Karaman, named for one of the Turkish Beliks, a kingdom in Anatonia that got conquered by the Ottomans in what is now southern Turkey. Huh. I feel like that's just a bit too obscure. So to give you a sense of, of kind of what I'm thinking here, I don't think there's any wrong answers when it comes to what star systems are named. Because I think people are naming these star systems to honor things from Earth that they want to remember. Because Earth is gone, so in many ways, um, it's only in name that elements from it can, can live on here. So, in terms of what people would want to be immortalized, I, I think almost anything works. But it's just figuring out where it's going to be the most appropriate is, is the trick. And again, uh, if you're going to give me names, give me the etymology too. Tari witch, which means God in Turkish. Hmm. I don't know enough about religion to know if that's acceptable, so I'm probably not going to do that one, but that's another good suggestion. So I'll, I'll look into that. Huh. All right, let's uh, go back to my list here. Tallest mountain in Ethiopia. That's a good one. Raz Deshen. Raz Deshen, that's a good one. I like that a lot. Actually. Let's uh let's make this one Raj Deshen. And let's mark that on our list. How do I make stuff? Color. Damn it. Someone might need to do this for me because this is there we go. Egyptian for the good island. That's another great one. Let's add that. Which is the good island out of all of these? Which is the goodest island? That feels like a pretty good island. Okay, what else do we got? Named after the former capital of the Zulu Empire, maybe. Greek God of the Dead, Elysium. I always see Elysium. Elysium's a good name. Town in Utah, I don't know about that one. Maltese or Promised Land. Alright, what's chat saying? Constantinople for an edge system that is named despite the Turks by, like, maybe the Greeks. Ah... Uh... I feel like there's a Constantinople in the, the the far frontier. I don't know about in the middle of the the Orion Arm. So we'll we'll uh, come back to that one. Krita comes from Old Javanese, which means sport slash play. Oh yeah, the Olympics. Uh, someone's gonna have to explain to me how the Olympics became a meme and Donna victory because I think I missed that one. Uh, Elephantine, a place in Egypt. I like that one. I want to do some research on the etymology of that one, though. Just, uh, that is a good name, though. Iriet, Turkish astrophysicist. When it comes to naming star systems after people, got to be careful, because number one, I got to make sure that they're not affected by our alternate history. And number two, I'm generally not a fan of naming anything massive after individuals. I like concepts or historical things or historical figures, not real once living people, I guess. Uh, Kunani, lawgiver, was Suleiman the Great's Turkish title. Okay. That, I mean, I just said I don't want to name them after people, but I, I think historical figures are an okay one. I'm going to add that to my possible list. Ararat, the mountain of God. Good name for a holy slash cult planet. I don't know if we're going to have any holy cult planets in this, but I do like the, the naming of that. Let's add Ararat here. Wasn't Ararat also the name of the mountain in Diablo? Ararat. Mountain of God. 
I know Tim Barton sometimes watches these streams, so Mr. Tim, if you're here, add a thing next to Ararat that possibly looks like something related to a mountain. I have no idea. All right, what else do we got? If you like concepts, how about Hatikava? I don't know how to pronounce that. Hat Hatikava, Hebrew for the hope. That is another good one. I'm adding that to my possible list. I don't want to add it to this section specifically because I'm not exactly sure uh, where it'd be most appropriate. Do, 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 do. Uh, umut, which means hope in Turkish. I feel like this could... Yeah, I like that. Hope in Turkish. That is a good one. I, I mean, I hate it in real life when people name stuff hope because I think it's cheesy, but I can't deny that it's like realistic for people to name that. So let's do, let's actually make that one of the actual Turkish systems. For now, at least you might come back and move these around as I've been saying, but right now I just want to get some names on the map and see w what kind of fits, you know? Uh, is Nick a city in Turkey? I want to avoid cities. Um, I want, I want big concepts. I don't want anything that's going to be exclusionary to anybody else. Maybe Malacca, you know, Strait of Malacca. Okay, that's a possible one. We also had a Malacca in Stellaris Invicta Season 2. Bosphorus, after the Straits where Istanbul is located. I mean, we're kind of playing with fire on that one since Turkey is next to an interstellar Bosphorus called the New Canaan Corridor, so I don't want to draw attention to that, but maybe somewhere else on the map. I can't pronounce any of these. Ephesius, a name of an ancient Roman city in Turkey. I kind of like that. Let's, um... I got an idea. I got an idea. Sometimes names influence lore, sometimes lore influences name. Influences name. So... Eph Eph I, did I... Okay, E-P-H... Yes, I think I got that right. Ephesus. And I think, um... Maybe there's ruins on this planet. Maybe there's some like weird alien stuff and they named it after this Roman city kind of like as a nod to Lost Empire. Does that make sense? All right, well, ideas for now. All right, what else do we got? Noah's Ark is meant to be on that mountain. All right, so we also need Noah's Ark flying in space right around here or else this will not be realistic. Okay, what else do we got? Bandar, Persian for haven slash port. That is another great one. I feel like you folks have really got a handle on what kind of names we're looking for here. So, let's make that another Turkish one. I like the idea that star systems have these kind of vaguely nautical names. It uh, seems to make sense. And sorry if I'm falling behind and looking at chat. A lot of suggestions to get through. Uh, would you consider Ara Nocta Turkish for waypoint? Yes, I would, but I'm going to put that. Actually, you know what? Uh, okay, let's put that on hold, but that is a yes. Just remind me again when we get to the new Canaan corridor, because I think it's going to be in the middle of the corridor. For a laugh, you can name three planets Live, Laugh, and Love in Turkish. Ah, yeah, I love where your head's at, but that's a, that's a no from me. Uh, Manzikert for a Turkish system. The event essentially allows for the inhabitation of a Tolia. I don't know. Well, give me the etymology and we'll come back to it. Troy, it's in Turkey. Yeah, but Troy has kind of transcended. Uh, it's in uh, popular culture now. Oh, Lail, Turkish for tulip, the national flower of Turkey. I like that a lot. Okay. So just as a reminder, none of these names are set in stone. The idea is to just get names on the map. We'll see how they fit. We'll see how I feel about them. And maybe like, for example, if we really like Lail, Maybe we start looking at other flowers and name them all after flowers. I don't know. I just want to just wanna get some stuff out there because I don't want to look at dots the rest of my life. 
And what do you have in mind for Turkish lore? You mentioned Ottomans, but the wiki also mentions the Republic. It might be best to separate naming conventions based on that. So as far as Turkish states go, there's only the Republic of Turkey. I don't think we have the Ottoman Empire uh, in this setting. I mean, I know we don't. Uh, so the Ottoman reference might have just been for something else. But so only one Turkey. As for their lore, hasn't really been developed that much yet. Um, nothing really set in stone. But the general idea is that... Let's hide the uh, the box here. I'll do a brief lore overview of this area. All right, general idea is that the new Canaan Corridor is this very important trade route uh, linking the Sphere and the Oto. So whoever controls this is kind of a, in a really big spot. And there's two independent powers. We got Turkey and someone else. So the idea is that the Sphere and Oto are kind of fighting over these powers here, which is great for Turkey and whoever else is there because they can leverage both sides. That, that, that's the plan. All right, so I'm going to read off the last few suggestions here, and then we'll take some super chats because it's been a second. All right. What do we got here? The Turks changed Ephesius's name centuries ago, so I doubt a planet would be named as such. Okay, which, um... Where was that? Did we actually name a planet Ephesius, or are you just saying in general? I don't think we named that, so we'll come back to that unless I missed it. Oh, we did. Alright, there it is. Uh, okay, so what did they rename it to, is the question. Well, let's do a bit of research while, uh, while we're here. Ephesius. On the other monitor, it's saying that... Okay, this is Greek. Oh, in Turkish, it's called Ephes. So that's what we're doing. Ephes? I think. Not that star systems can't have two names, but given that we're this close to Turkey, I feel like the Turkish name would kind of win out, you know? Okay, any other good names I'm seeing here? Salinigos, Turkish for snail. Yeah, yeah, the snail crowd's back again. Make some of the Vatican systems named after saints. Well, we're not on Vatican yet, so we'll keep that uh, in your back pocket. The first O and Oto looking kind of sus. Look, it's, it's hard. I, I think it turned out pretty well. Battle of Manzikert, where the Turkish host defeats the Byzantines and seizes most of Anatolia. Yes, yes, that is a good one. And I think that's probably not what the official Turkish government would name a system, because that's, like, too provocative. But I feel like an independent Turkish explorer would absolutely name a new planet he discovered, or a new system he discovered after that battle. Manzikert. What else do we got? Alright, I feel like I'm mostly caught up here. Let's uh, get to the old Super Chats, shall we? Alright, and thank you to everyone who has been donating. Uh, very much appreciated. Help keeps the lights on. Alright, uh, what is the largest... Or, sorry, Sika asking, What is the largest single object slash machine slash structure that was saved from Earth without being disassembled? Um, hmm. So, I, I guess without being disassembled, that, that's tough, because in order to get anything off Earth, I feel like it would have needed to be disassembled at least slightly. But in terms of, like, the largest thing, machine, whatever, that, like, still exists, that, you know, isn't just a pile of bolts somewhere? Ah, that's a good question. Probably no, no buildings. Like, I can't imagine anyone being like, let's dig up the Statue of Liberty and, and take that off world. So, I think the Statue of Liberty bought it, just like it did in the Stellaris Invicta every time. But, um, I think the, the USS Constellation, no, Constitution, sorry, the USS Constitution probably made it out, the HMS Victory probably made it out, they had to cut off the mass and all that, right, but they can reassemble it. Uh, maybe, you know, historical artifacts, a lot of museum pieces, that kind of stuff. A lot of stuff got lost, but they had a hundred years to get things off Earth, so they, they had plenty of time. Uh, will there be any sci-fi equivalent to, uh, 
Impestment. What's that? Do I know that word? Viking raids or privateers. What is impestment? Am I an idiot? Does everyone know what that means but me? Impestment. Oh, the practice of forcing men to serve in the military against their will. Okay, learn something new every day. Uh, will any faction be silly enough to try to build some wonder waff? How common will power armor be? This is like three, four questions. All right, you, but 20 bucks, I guess you get your money's worth. So, uh, sci-fi equivalent to impestment Viking raids. Probably not any, like a direct one-to-one. -one, but in the far frontier, the rules are different. So, in like the middle of the Orion Arm, no, that stuff's not happening. But if you get out far enough then yeah, not Viking raids, but you know, pirate raids. There's definitely privateers out there. Uh, you probably could get, uh, I don't know, roped up into some sort of enlistment gang. I don't know. And speaking of impestment, uh, if we have anyone in Scotland in chat, my ancestor <laughs> forced your ancestors to fight in World War I. <laughs> uh, apparently, my great-grandfather went around to bars in Glasgow and forced people to join the army. So, not exactly proud of that guy, but what can you do? Okay, uh, any faction silly enough to build a Wonderwaff? Yes, but that's all I'm going to say. How common is power armor? Not that common. Power armor, not that useful, only in certain situations. So, for the most part, no power armor, but it still exists. How will drop pods be like Halo ODST? Uh... These are big questions. I might have to come back to some of these, but I like where your head's at. Sorry if I can't answer all of this just super in-depth. What happens in Vega stays in Vega. I mean, it's kind of the opposite. It's more like what happens in Vega has the potential to not stay in Vega and then ruin the entire world or the entire Orion arm. And Kadia lives. Give us Kadia, please. Okay, there'll probably be like a crappy asteroid somewhere called Kadia. And... There was a National Guard post on it, and then the planet, the asteroid, hit something. And now we get to say that sign that everyone loves. Okay, what next? Uh, what keeps the Cold War from going hot? Why haven't the superpowers gone kinetic? You mentioned MAD wasn't really a thing in the last one. Is it just too easy to defend with the way strings work or something else? So, the reason why the Cold War hasn't gone hot up until now is that up until the last... 50 years or so it, it, it wouldn't have been possible there were the, the um the connections between the nations just weren't developed enough so even though they could communicate and they could meet the idea that oto could like send a fleet into the soviet union uh was impossible but 50 years of geopolitics and now the oto you know has bases everywhere it has members everywhere the common turn has members everywhere the access is every like so the the capabilities of these states have finally got to the point where war is possible. Because before that, it wouldn't have been. Now, we mentioned that the reason Vega started a war was because they knew that the OTO and the Germans and whoever else couldn't intervene for another 20 dec or another twenty years. So that's what we're kind of talking about. Okay. Oh, the Swede finally giving me my answer. Thank you. Mark, Olympia Gang was a meme that came from a VC call. Uh, if it was a what if in space and me and some others made it a group and now it has 10 pages of lore Good lord, that's crazy. You people are crazy, but thank you very much nevertheless And what do we got here? So are there aliens or ruins of alien sifts? Yes Well, we know for sure there's aliens at least there used to be on earth and then they got annihilated um, there are aliens some around here, but if you want to know more about them you got to ask the Soviet Ministry of Information, and they are being very tight-lipped on what's going on over there. So, very few details of what's happening. And ruins of alien civs. Yes, there are ruins everywhere. In fact, one was found on FS, I think we just said. And last one before we get back to it. Sorry for the earlier super chat. Ah, no worries. I, I, I'm glad people are enthusiastic about this stuff. Many questions for military things. What types of weapons or military tactics will be banned under some sort of or will be uh, banned under some sort of Space Geneva Convention, or any rules on the treatment of prisoners of war? This is a great question. Has anything been banned? Um, probably. I, I so to answer this question, what I would need to do is look at those types of weapons that are banned in real life, figure out why they're banned, and then kind of I don't know, just think about how that would apply to future military technology. So. A lame answer, maybe, but the same type of stuff that gets banned in real life 
gets banned in the future, which is weapons that have the potential to, I don't know, cause destructive civilian casualties or can't be controlled or dangerous to both sides. So stuff like that. So probably biological weapons, chemical weapons. Nah, they wouldn't ban those. Never mind. Maybe nothing's banned. I'll, I'll have to look into this, but thank you for uh, getting me to question this because that is a, that is a very good question. Biological warfare, I think, maybe the big one. That, that seems like such a mess. But then, like, even if it is banned, let, let's say that everything's banned, right? Once World War III starts, like, is anyone really going to care? So the real answer to this question is a lot of stuff is banned until one side is losing and then nothing is banned. So that's that's my thinking. All right, a couple more here. Uh, how will the vegan war affect my pizza order I ordered from a place in Vega a few minutes ago? Will I get my order to the UK? Well, that would depend. Did you order your pizza from East Vega or West Vega? Because one of them sucks. And will there be occasional stars with proper names and among the clusters beyond the core ones uh, started with? They probably wouldn't be renamed. Um, what do you mean by proper names? Oh, do you mean like um, Wolf 359? Like, so names that exist in real life. Yeah, so the theory behind this, I can tell you kind of why we were thinking about what was going on here. So the idea is that um, every star on this map is a star that exists in real life. But a lot of them have been renamed. I think you mentioned this in your comment, actually. Just because, you know, if you're living on, I don't know, Wolf 359 is an example. That's not exactly the most memorable name. So, for example, like Delta Draconis probably used to be named something else. Then it got renamed. I don't know. Does this make sense? Essentially, I'm trying to say that uh, all these are real stars. Many have been renamed. And I don't think that I want to put in any more like proper named stars like further out. Um, I, like, what's a, what's a star that is further out? I don't know the names of stars, but let's say that, like, um, Antares was, like, supposed to be over here. I'm not sure if we'd want to have a direct reference to it, simply because I don't want you to be able to calculate how many light years things are away from each other. Because as soon as we get there, then that's, like, too much information, and then it's just too hard to come up with distances and time and all that. So, you've got a couple free ones in the cluster. Just to give you the sense that, yes, this is our galaxy, but beyond that, that's it. That was a rambling answer. I hope that made sense. This is me talking it through as I'm answering your question here, so I appreciate that. All right, well, let's get back to it. And we'll bring back the regular chat so I can actually see what's going on. Okay, and thanks again for the super chats. We'll get to them in our next... Uh, break here. So, got a couple more names I want to get through here. Let's, uh... Actually, you know what? I'm tired of naming stuff. I need a break from naming stuff. Let's, um, work on the new Canaan Corridor. And actually put down some star systems here. So, how is the new Canaan Corridor gonna work? Hmm. That is the question. So... If you'll forgive me, I never want to rush into these things. So I kind of want to plan this out. So <clears throat> what I'm kind of thinking is if you're entering the new Canaan corridor from this side, it's from this side rather. How do I shrink this down? I have no idea. Whatever. All right. So if you're heading in from this side, you're starting on new Canaan. And if you're starting from this side, you're probably starting here. And my thinking was, there needs to be multiple routes through the New Canaan Corridor. Like, there's not just one way through. And each route needs to have some advantage or disadvantage. So, presumably, the fastest route is also the riskiest. Whereas, slower routes are less risky, more reliable. So, how does that work? Alright, let's uh, start brainstorming here. So... Here is what I am thinking. So here is our exit. Right around there. Okay. And then maybe like route number one. I wish I could figure out how to change the size of this thing. I, how do I make this smaller? Pencil? Nope. A 
Okay, so Route 1 maybe is like here. Route 2 goes like this, and then Route 3 just goes right through the center? Or is that too boring looking? Hard to say. Well, let's let's just start messing around. We'll see what we get. So, Raz de Shen. We'll make Raz de Shen the entrance to, like, the predictable route. Which means, let's, uh... But a bit back here. And again, for those of you watching, I'm I'm not the best at Illustrator, so my apologies if I it's frustrating to watch me fuck around with all this stuff. And Dylan uh saying the corridor and new canon corridor is spelled wrong. Is that true? My god, you were right. Okay, so let's... There definitely needs to be like a halfway point where it's like your um, like base camp. Like you're halfway through the corridor, you can stop here, refuel, rearm, do all that stuff. So that's going to be there. And we kind of want it to be like the nexus of the three different lanes. Something like that. And this section over here looks too cool for there not to be anything, so... Again, this is where I feel terrible because my instinct is just to put this like right over that cool looking thing. Oh, I might have to do that. That looks too cool. Tim, if you're watching, I'm sorry. Okay, so starting with lane number one, you go from here to here. And then maybe, like, if this is one of the slower ones, there should be a bunch of different star systems, like... Something like that. Kind of doing this backwards. Usually I do the planets first, but this seems like a good way to kind of... Figure stuff out. So that is route number one. And then route number two. Where does it go? Hmm. This is actually kind of kind of stressing me out. I don't know where to put this. Let's do here. At least this music is doing wonders. That's pretty slick. I can't tell if this is working for me. Something like this. The problem is it just looks kind of ugly, doesn't it? 
I don't know if this is working for me. Maybe the way to do this is to just do one path at a time. So let's uh, let's start that. So this is the end. That's the start. I'm so tired of all constantly having to redo these uh, style of this stuff. Okay, something like. Well, let's do the easy path first, like the the fastest one. I mean. This. I always love putting star systems on these nebula streams. They look so cool. Something like that. Oh, you know what? I think I just figured this out. Okay, I know how this is gonna work. So, you start on New, Cam on New Canaan, you go here, then you go there. Whereas if you're going on this side, you probably start here. Like so. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. Rather than having three routes through, there's one route through that doesn't go all the way. There's a break in the middle of it. So, if you want to skip uh, or save amount of time, what you do is you go to this star system here, except... What do we got? I, I got this. I got this so nailed. So, what do we got? If you go there, then here, then like. Something like this, perhaps. So, the idea is that you can go the long, safe way where your trip is being. Protected by the US Navy and the British Navy or the Royal Navy and the French Navy and These pathways are like really safe but If you want to save some time you can instead try to do an unstable jump through this thing here Probably shaves like a week off your journey or whatever it is But you're out of luck like no one's helping you if shit goes down uh, right around here so I don't know, for those of you in chat, does that sound kind of cool? I think that's a neat uh, way to do this.
Like so, yeah. Although, because the strings are going to be so weak here, we can't have, like, even moderately long ones, so there has to be, like, some star systems to make this worthwhile, you know, like... Like that. But now that seems, like, too long. What if we did this? I, I know I'm closing in on this, it's just a matter of... Figuring out what's going to look good. Something like that. Although, I really liked having the visual of this area here being the... Like, that was a nice shorthand, so this kind of breaks out a bit. Yeah, there's got to be a way to make this work. I'm just not liking what I'm seeing right now. Oh, maybe that's how that works. Maybe it's here. Let's move this down here a bit. Like so, okay, okay, now we're making progress, like this, and then... Like so. Okay, so that's how it's gonna work. You can either take the long way and go, like, here. The other long way. Or... You go right through the middle. Yeah. If this squiggly line isn't doing uh, doing it for you, then I don't know what will, because this is fantastic. And thanks again for the super chats. I'll be getting to them as soon as I stop, you know, obsessing over where the lines should be. But they are very much appreciated. Yeah, so like, even though these cosmic strings are pretty weak, they're just good enough to make that worthwhile, I think. But let's put it back, I liked it where it was. Something like that. I don't know, we'll I, I don't want to spend too much time messing around with this, I'll probably fiddle with it off stream a bit, but for now, that's looking pretty good. Actually, I hate that. And you just know that this whole area is full of pirates, right? Like... This is where if you want to fuck with international shipping, this is where you go. Yeah. Okay. Getting there. Now for the other routes.
Maybe like this. Yeah, it's looking all right. Although now I feel like the the main like the weird route is too low, and like shouldn't it be in the center maybe? Well, I don't want to waste too much time fiddling around with this. Let's get on to the rest of it. So the third route is where? Like maybe it's New Canaan to Kalkin to Ararat to... Yes, right around here. Gonna be a little bit of a crowded area, but that's the way it goes. This might be too crowded. I might need to come back to this and, and take some stuff out. But for now, just getting a sense of what it should look like. Looks like I did break some of the strings. That's on me. I worry it's a bit too convoluted. And that the pathways through are not distinct enough. Maybe like so. Something like that, perhaps. <laughs> the strings, Mark. What did the strings mean? Mark's therapist in the future. Yes, I will be talking about strings a lot uh, the next time I have a mental breakdown. I feel like this still isn't quite working, but it's closer, and then yet I'm not entirely sure why. Like, is it just the placement? What is it about this that's not quite doing it for me? Hmm. Maybe we'll come back to this, because I feel like I'm hitting a dead end. And yet... I feel like there's something here that I'm, I'm missing. Okay, what if I did this? Okay, I'm breaking too much stuff. There we go.
Why can't I unselect that? There we go, jeez. Illustrator, my nemesis. Come on, how do I add an anchor point to this? I know I'm allowed to do it. Hmm, 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 hmm. This is like actually quite tough. I am I am stuck. I'm gonna do some super chats because I cannot figure this one out. Alright, what have I missed? Huh. Uh the amount of war crimes committed must be insane. Thanks for the super chat there, Blue Space. Ah uh, I mean I would say that any amount of war crimes is insane, but uh I am also not sure if this is a part of the setting that I want to focus too much on. So, yes, they're a thing, but don't ask me for specifics. And Joshua saying, serious question now. Will nations ever weaponize this in Faxi? Will some non-state actors have their hands on some too? The next WMD. So, I guess, like, technically, all of humanity has, quote-unquote, weaponized the this in Faxi because the, the, the breakthrough that came that allowed for faster than light travel was derived from materials, Synfaxi materials analyzed after the first war. So whether that counts as weaponizing, I don't know. But uh, as for what's going on on Earth, like why governments are still there, there's only so much I can say. But uh, you're asking the right question. How about how about that? Is that is that a good answer? Maybe? Probably not. But it's... it's you're. I wish I could say more, but yes... All right, Blue Space asking, could there be planets filled with primitive humans who lost access to their advanced tech during the evacuation and don't know about the rest of the galaxy and think they're the only humans left? Um, possibly. I think in the early days of, of the colonization effort, there was a lot of questions like that because some planets were, you know, cut off for, for a while, for over a decade. But I think we're at the point now that, like, if there was a long lost planet somewhere, it's already... The time's passed where it, it would have been found by now because it's not like the strings are invisible, right? Like, there's only so many places you can go. So, I would say probably no. But, um, in the far frontier, maybe there's some, like, primitivist communities that propped up, but they wouldn't be, you know, long-lost colonies or anything. And... In consideration of an opponent nation for Turkey being an East Asia country, uh, which nations do you already know were wiped out by the alien infestation on Earth when they first cropped up in the Third World? So, we got a bit of a problem with our lore in that we have to have two contradictory elements, right? Like, on the one hand, the first Synfaxi War was terrible and it demolished a large part of the Earth. And on the other hand, it seems like, well, not everyone could have died because apparently... You know, a lot of folks made it into space. So the idea is that um, the first Infaxi War didn't necessarily, you know, annihilate or eradicate a large part of the... Or, hmm, how do I phrase this? The first Infaxi War was devastating, but not because a lot of people were wiped out, but rather because if it hadn't been stopped, a lot of people were about to be wiped out. Um, it was more like the actual advance of this in fact, was limited to these very thin lines of advance, but those lines of advance were passing through rivers and rail lines and highways, so it was like maybe only 5% of the United States gets occupied by this in during the war, but it's the 5% that the United States can't afford to lose. So that's how it, we kind of rationalize this, where you know, it's not like entire countries are getting wiped out during the in war, but had this in war gone on for like another year then the lines of advance would have met you would have had these giant pockets of population centers trapped within Synfaxi outgrowths and then it would have been 
there's no coming back for that. So the Synfaxi War was was horrible or horrible and awful and apocalyptic, but it was very concentrated, and th that's at least where we're at now. We're still you know working on all this stuff. All right, one more. Pizza got here on time from East Vega. A little burnt. Well, hey, you get what you pay for, right? But uh, I'm glad your pizza arrived. You'd hate to not have that. All right. Back to this corridor. That's breaking my brain. Okay, I think I'm going to move this here. Get this here. I think the thing to do is simplify. I think I got ahead of myself. Something like this, perhaps. I feel like I'm getting closer. I'm just not exactly sure what this needs to look like, you know? Okay, what if this was here? And that was there. Oh, come on, work with me here. Illustrator, you son of a bitch, I know you know what I want to do. Why are you acting like this? Okay, so I like the look of that. And it's just got to be like, why wouldn't you want to take this route? Because there's one down here. Something like that, perhaps? Okay, you know what? I think we're getting close. Yeah. I don't think I hate this. I think this is working. All right, so new canine there. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine jumps more or less, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's slightly faster, at least in terms of total systems, compared to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's about the same, so we need a bit more going on here. Yeah, that looks a bit more visually distinctive at least, right? Like it feels like I can see the three routes a lot easier. One, two, 
three. It's just going to be a question of like actually counting one, two, three, four, and making sure that like this makes sense. <laughs> but visually, at least, I think we're I think we're getting there. Hmm. Well, I want to put it up to uh, up to chat here, so I can keep messing around with the uh, the new Canaan corridor and like really make this stream entirely about it, or we can move on to a different section of the map and maybe work on... I kind of want to add um, uh, some more systems around here for uh, Pakistan and other parts of uh, the Indian subcontinent. We could also add some more to the Vega Cluster. Just uh, let me know what you're feeling in chat, because I I, I'm feeling pretty good about this, but I'm also wanting to do other stuff, so I'm not going to worry too much about anything here. But yeah, let me know. Let me know, folks. But this is looking pretty slick. Pretty slick indeed. Like, maybe these planets are just on the edge of the corridor. One thing I've learned working on this map is that the placement of the stars goes such a long way to informing the general aesthetic of the map. And what I really like doing is rather than having stars be like, you know, just kind of scattered all over like this, I much prefer having like little clusters like this, you know, linked to other clusters by, by longer strings. I think that looks really good. It's just a question of figuring out the best placement. All right, I am happy with this. I just broke everything. <laughs> Ain't that just the way? Okay, we'll start there. Okay, so here's why I think this works, right? You're starting on New Canaan. You want to end up there. You got three options. The first option you got is this top route. Probably one of the safer ones. You go there, 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 you end up there. Second uh, route is you go down to Kalkin, then to Mount Ararat, Menoff, Independent, Independent, there, there. Or the danger route. You start on the top route, then you detour to this star system here. Now, once you're there, you got one last chance to kind of like not do this, and you can take the second route, or you risk it. I like that a lot. That's cool. That does mean, though, that the lower route needs to have more star systems, just so it's not so uh, fast in comparison. It needs to be slower. But, uh... Like, something like that, but I'll worry about that later. Okay. Oh, actually, let's see what chat's saying here, because I just saw something that's very, uh, good idea. Uh, Toucan Man saying, maybe the top route is patrolled by the OTO, and the bottom route is patrolled by the Sphere. So I, I think we can go even deeper than that. I would say that, like, Turkey probably patrols, like, one of these lines, and whoever is up here patrols the other one. So, depending on how stuff's going... That's why you'd want them on your side, right? Because when you bring Turkey to your side, you're not just getting Turkey in the OTO or in the common turn or whatever. You're getting basically a way through the corridor. Yeah, in fact, I bet Turkey like has stations like all throughout here. 
Yeah. But that's, uh, thank you, 2K man. You are thinking all the right questions here. That's, a uh, very, uh... That's, yeah. <laughs> Good comment. Yes. Okay. But uh, I'm happy with this. Let's uh, let's move on to a different section for now. I feel like I'm gonna get new cannon fever if I don't. And where are we thinking here? Possibly, should we work on? <laughs> you know what? Let's add Pakistan. I have been ignoring them for far too long. Pakistan. So, let's get their roundel going. Okay. So, oh, okay, that did not work. It's a bit big. Pakistan, Pakistan, where art thou? Originally, the idea was that uh, Pakistan might not have been called Pakistan in the DOVO verse, just because, you know, alternate history shenanigans. But the story of how Pakistan got its name is, like, really interesting. Of course, I forgot it, otherwise I would have something to talk about right now, but... Uh... But I believe the name of Pakistan derives from... A number of different uh, ethnicities, I think, that live in the region that they've just combined the name together and it worked out perfectly. So that's pretty cool. I don't know. I thought that was neat. Okay, help me out here. Why isn't this doing what I wanted to do? Make it green. All right, have I done this? Is this working? All right, I finally made a circle. There we go. All right, so Pakistan, what's the population of Pakistan? Is it it's like it's pretty big, right? It's like 300 300 million. Somewhere around there, Pakistan population. It is 231 million compared to, you know, a billion and change in India. So if India has this many star systems, I feel like Pakistan maybe has three or four. Not that number of star systems compares to, or is like a direct um, indicator of population size, but I feel like developing an entire star system, that's like a bit of work, right? So... Actually, having fewer star systems can be better in some cases for different states. Like, the Soviet Union has a million star systems, but they're all fucking spread out, so the Soviet Union is kind of in a bad place. Compare that to Chile, which is just chillin', and they got a nice centralized state right in the middle of the, uh, all of our sea, if that extends that high. Okay, and I mean, this, like, area here looks so fucking cool. So, Pakistan gets a good corner of the galaxy, I think. I mean, God, Tim is, is just so goddamn good at this. Like, these clouds here look so rad. Yeah, I'm into it. I am into it. Something like this. And uh, was the god saying in chat that uh, a centralized Chile is the exact opposite of Chile on Earth? Yeah. 
Sometimes history rhymes and sometimes history does not. I guess if you wanted like an accurate chili, it would have to look like this, right? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> But as for Pakistan, I kind of feel like they're concentrated around here. This area looks really cool, so like... Oh shit, we got Nurgle, okay. It is possible that Pakistan is in league with the Plague God, but I don't like that idea, so let's add a fourth one. So we're not making the Nurgle symbol. So I feel like... How did this happen? The Soviet Union was taking all the strings here. At some point, the Soviet Union begins mapping out these strings. And I guess the Soviets sell that info to the Indians. Maybe the British were involved too. And that's how we end up with the Indian subcontinent kind of ending up around here because they used mostly Soviet drives. Although, would Pakistan use Soviet drives? Should Pakistan be here in the first place? Hmm. Yeah, I think so. I, I don't like the idea that the only way that... Like, the, that these nations that don't necessarily get along in real life, they have to be split apart. Like, I don't know. I, I like to think there's a future where every nation gets along, right? Like, none of this is set in stone. Like, things can change, so... I, I don't want to just be like, well, Pakistan would never want to be near India. It's like, no, they can get over it. I mean, I say this as a Canadian. Didn't we burn down the White House a while ago? And now we seem to get along mostly, so. It's what Rocky IV taught us, right? If I can change and he can change, then everyone can change. And then something happened. There was a boxing match. I don't know. I haven't seen that movie in a while. Damn, I kind of really like the look of that. Did I nail this on the first go? Yeah, I think I did. And then, you know, <laughs> whatever we uh, call the system, it cannot be called Kashmir. That's all I know. Um, but we do, like, let's have some independent systems in there. Is, uh, chat making fun of me for being an optimist? Which is weird, because I'm not an optimist. I just think that, like, didn't I say, like, it's just nothing set in stone is my point. Like, just because people don't get along now doesn't mean they won't get along in the future. That's all I'm saying. And, uh, pen... Is an A in a dent? I really like the look of that section. Ah, fuck it. Let's get Pakistan one more. They've earned it. Also, what is going on with the music today? This rules. This is what you listen to when it's 1985, summer just started. I don't know what movies are in theaters, but probably a good time. Okay. Like so. The only thing I don't like about this is Pakistan should not be reliant on India to get into the main Orion arm. 
Like, is, like, maybe India shouldn't even control. No, maybe they do. Okay, um... So what we do is we add some independent systems. Just messing around with different string shapes here, see how it looks. This might be the official Dawn of Victory playlist for all future streams, because this is this is this is doing real well. Something like this. I'll tell you one thing though, Pakistan is such a great flag, why is their roundel just a boring circle like this? We I mean, gotta get the crescent in there, that's what I'm thinking. So to talk more about the uh, the philosophy of this map, one thing I mentioned before is that like we're kind of dividing this into sections, right? Like we have different regions. We got the local cluster, the Dwanga Deeps, the Sea of Clouds, and we want each section of the map to have its own personality, but also share a lot of the same essential elements that all science fiction settings have. So for example, like we got this pirate area in the Golden Horn, right? But this isn't the only pirate area in the whole Orion Arm, right? There's also going to be ones around here. You want some around here. So that way, like, say you're playing a D&D campaign and you're starting off in the Indian arm, there'll still be, like, pirate enclaves and mercenary groups and all this stuff no matter where you are. So I'm hoping that we can get that detailed on it where no matter where you start, there's cool stuff. That's the philosophy, at least. I'll hopefully refine that. But now I feel like I'm covering up cool parts of the map, and Tim's gonna yell at me, so... Do I try to adjust this slightly so the text isn't that abrasive? Because I really love the look of this area here, and I want to make sure you can actually see it. Get in there. Get in there. I'd uh, be really interested to know what George R. R. Martin was doing when he was, like, making the map of Westeros. 
Like, do you think he was like, oh shit, I can't put that city there because I'll be covering up a cool part of the map? Because that's like most of what I'm thinking about. Okay, that's looking good. All right, let's save this, by the way, while we're here. And let's uh, do any super chats I might have missed. I think there's been a couple, or at least one at least. Let's go. Uh, one and only saying, thank you for the clarification. It's a clever way to give you freedom of choice for nations. House, I am, Thailand, or even Indonesia, independent of Dutch, Netherlands, colonial control. Uh, I don't know the context of this. What was I talking about when, when this came up? Uh, House, I am, or even Indonesia for Turkey rival. Okay. Indonesia was one option I was thinking of. Hmm. It would need to be independent Indonesia because there's no way the Netherlands is keeping control of it post Synfaxi. So Indonesia maybe right here. And they only have one planet just to help them out since they're no longer trapped across a million islands or whatever it is. So, okay, yeah, possibly Indonesia. I'm thinking about that. And to avoid the real distances distance issue, why not say this map is a jump map, not real space map? Positions don't map. Yeah, so. Like, as for what this map actually is, like, who is this map being made for? I see this as, um, a ski trail map. If you go to a ski hill, there's always this beautifully illustrated, uh, rendering of the mountain, right? But if you look at the illustration compared to the mountain, obviously one is real life and one is more vibrant and interesting. And that's what I kind of feel this is. I feel like... There's some grainy satellite photo, like they, they sent it like a probe, right? A million light years out, and they got this crappy photo back, and then they've given it to an artist, Tim Barton in Universe, and be like, hey, can you illustrate this the way it probably looks? And then he does that. So, the, I mean, the big question is like, does the Orion arm actually look like this, or is this just like the, the high exposure version of Nebula photos? Um, I don't have an answer yet. But that's kind of the stuff I'm thinking about. Was, did I answer anything or did I just ramble for five minutes? I, I have no idea what I'm saying half the time. But the point is, I'm thinking about it. And that I'm not even going to get too hung up on, like, the distances here. Because, like, if we say that, you know, Sol is how many light years away? Two or however many light years away is from Alpha Centauri. Like, we're still 3D space here. So there's some wiggle room. So I'm not going to get too hung up on, on the distances. Okay, I think I maybe answer that question. Uh, given the history of the Indian independence movement slash British partition, uh, if you don't want India, Pakistan to be enemies, why not make them one nation? Uh, I would say that I think the Pakistani independence movement, I'm not sure about this, but I think it evolved alongside the Indian independence movement. And I think, uh, I mean, clearly in our, the real world, there's a desire for, for two nations and I don't think that goes away. So, um, there are some cases where we have these big regional blocks, but not every case. In the case of, uh, we got Grand Colombia here. So we got like Lima, Venezuela, and a lot of um, Northern South America in a, in a regional confederation here, but not all the time. So I think Pakistan is independent. As for why some nations are independent while other ones get kind of consolidated, I'm not sure. In some of these cases, it's just like a roll of the dice. Um, just to keep things interesting. And how much of the ecosystems of these worlds are of native flora and fauna versus animal and plants imported from Earth? Have there been any major ecological disasters from introducing Earthborn stuff? Yes, this is a great question. Fantastic. Now I get to talk about some stuff. Okay, so the idea is when humanity first got out into the Orion Arm, they're finding all these planets, a suspicious number of inhabitable, colonizable planets, and many of them don't require that much terraforming at all. And one of the reasons why they're so easy to colonize is because all the life that exists on them is evolutionarily basic. So, like, you get to this planet and it's, like, full of the most unevolved grass you've ever seen, and that's it. So, if you're a farmer, all you gotta do is show up with, like, wheat, and your wheat, you don't have to do anything. It's gonna take over the entire planet because it's so much better, it's so much more evolved than any local stuff, so... 
earth, flora, and fauna takes over everything. Um, and it just spreads really rapidly. But there's been some problems because uh, in a few cases, earth life has like been modified or interbred or weird stuff has happened with the local alien plant life. Like the local alien stuff hasn't been wiped out completely, but has changed some earth life. So one of the big ones is on Alpha Centauri. Whatever you do, do not go swimming on Alpha Centauri because their oceans are full of gigantic sharks. Uh, in fact, uh, there's a regatta coming up that, frankly, I have some concerns about the security for. So, do not go swimming in uh, Alpha Centauri. And, how detailed are you with how basic weapons or spatial weapons will be or basic naval tactics? Will carriers stay behind the lines or are sticking guns on the hull having them fight as warships? Okay, so... This is a question that we've kind of answered on Discord. Um, we have a question and answer section there where I occasionally try to answer some stuff. And someone there asked about the range of space combat. You're asking about weapons. I think I can give you a good answer here. So hold up. Uh, oh, that shouldn't... Why is that there? All right, well, we'll come back to that later. The idea is, uh, if this is our starship, uh, there's three different ranges. that space combat takes place within. The first one is like 10 km. The second one, I think we said, is 300 km. And the outer one is... Man, I cannot write. <laughs> That's 100,000 kilometers, right? So this is uh, long range, medium range, ultra close range. You, won't, you don't want to be here. Uh, different weapons are uh, accurate at different dis distances, and the range of weapons is essentially unlimited, provided you have enough sensor coverage. So in the case of where carriers would be, a carrier would be in the center of a formation surrounded by escorts, which provide anti-air, whereas the carrier is extending the sensor profile of the ex entire fleet by deploying fighters armed with, like, you know, recon packages. I Did I answer that question? I always feel like I start talking and I don't know where I end up, and then hopefully the answer is somewhere in there. Um, I guess the answer is detailed. We're, we're putting a lot of thought into how space combat works. With different doctrines and, and different weapon styles, like, um... The Soviet Union, for example, they're really big into torpedoes. So they like really long-range fights. Oh my god, I just deleted everything. There's gonna be a better way to do this. All right, there we go. And did I delete anything by accident? No, it all seems good. Okay, we're fine. All right, but uh, thanks for that question. I hope I came close to answering it. All right, Pakistan, India, what do we got here? I think I'll do a few more independent systems, but for the most part... I'm liking how this is looking. Come on, give me a break. Like so, perhaps, kind of like in that. Okay, now what did I mess up before? I put a bunch of star systems on the wrong layer. But I'm slowly learning Illustrator, so I know how to move stuff around now. <laughs> okay. Pakistan, India. Yeah, that's. I'm liking that. I'm also pretty pleased uh, that we're calling this place Juno Reach. 
Uh, that is a reference to Juno Beach, which I thought was pretty funny. And we also got the, uh, the Juno something or other, the Great Juno Explosion, whatever that thing is. We gotta figure that out, because it looks really cool. Okay, new Canaan Corridor. All right, well, I'm gonna get back to, uh, to naming stuff then and try to start filling in some of these uh, independent uh, names here. So, what do we got? First thing I wanna do is fix this thing. I don't know what happened there. Zagama Beach! Always wanted to go there. It's not there anymore. Bugs did something, I don't know, I forget the line, but uh, I will always read out any Starship Troopers comments. That's a, uh, that's a guarantee. I love the way Rico says that in the movie. He's so smug about Zagama Beach. Zagama Beach! Always wanted to go there. It's not there anymore. Bugs wiped it out. And then his dad, Zagama Beach, tour the Outer Rings. Alright, I, I got distracted by Starship Troopers, that's my bad. <laughs> what am I doing? I need some Greek names. Sticks. One of the greatest and most important Persian poets. I kind of like that idea. Let's get a Persian poet in here. Historic name for Afghanistan, maybe. Do we got any Turkish names? This is not helping me too much. Turkish for waypoint. Okay, that's a good one. Ara Nocta. In fact, that feels like a name that should be in the new Canaan cluster. Waypoint. I just wish I could see, uh... Kurdistan, uh, maybe. That's a bit of a tricky one. Oh, I see. Sojourner in chat just recommended uh, Area Nocta for the for the new Canaan Quarter. Huh? Great minds. Arabic for horizon. Possibly. I don't. I don't think. Um, there's not too much Arabic influence in this part of the galaxy, at least not in the early days, I don't think. And uh, I'm trying to keep these questions mainly to the stream, but uh, Blue Space is asking, Hey Templin, do you plan on playing the new Kingdom of Rizia DLC for Suzerain? Yes! Um, one of the reasons I've been really trying to get my, my lungs working again is so I can get back to our regular streaming, and I feel like I'm there, so yes! I am so excited for the next uh, DLC for Suzerain. That is the best game I've ever played. God, that's so good. So yes, K Kingdom of Rizia, streaming that uh, in whenever it comes out. I don't know if they've announced the release date for it yet. I think they did, though. I think they just did. Roman name meaning city of palm trees. That's kind of a cool one.
You know what, I'll just have to keep this uh, on a different monitor. I feel like this is going to get too uh, annoying to look at. So apologies if you can't see what I'm doing, but I assure you I am working. Mountain in southwestern Morocco, maybe. Oh, we've got the a name derived from the Roman Emperor Hadrian. Erdine is a Turkish derivative of it. Okay, I like that. That feels like a more independent uh, system, though. I don't think you'd name Erdine. Yeah, something like that. What else do we got on our list? We got Turkish for realm on here. Oh, sunrise. And we got uh, sunrise or land where the sun rises. Andalu is the Turkish form. Land where the sun rises. Yes, that feels like an appropriate name for a star system. A super bright star system, I assume. Let's put that uh, out on the edge of the deeps. Actually, wait, what looks particularly bright around here? Well, nothing in particular, but... Uh, that's okay. Hmm, hmm, hmm. And again, none of these names are uh, locked, uh, set in stone or anything. Just kind of want to get them on there, and then we'll be refining stuff as we go along here. Oh, someone suggested Latin for daring end. That feels like... Would you would you name something on the daring end? Uh, maybe a bit too on the nose, but damn, that would be, be a good one. <laughs> well, let's work on the golden horn. Try to name some of these. And because uh, we got a lot of Americans and Western folks coming through this area, I feel like this is going to be easier for me to name. In fact, we got a suggestion for Clark, renowned science fiction author Arthur C. Clark. I don't know for sure that it's going to be named after him specifically, but I do like the name Clark, so let's get that on there. The Clark system. What else do we got on here? Original name for the blueberry? <laughs> A lot of these suggestions are just so great. City in Manitoba, I don't know about that. Attila the Hun, uh, maybe. What do we got? Nassau, Port Royal. A bit too on the nose for a pirate area, I think. Solomon, the Solomon system. Should the Solomon system be in the Golden Horn? That feels like it would fit pretty well. And what's chat offering up here? Point Fargo? I wish I could do that accent. Not sure about that one. Uh, anchor point, you go there for some new power converters. Possibly Sparrow. Do we want to really lean into the 
the pirate aspect and call one of these places Sparrow. Yeah. Yeah, we do. A guy entered the system. He saw a bit of nebula that looked like a sparrow. That's all you need sometimes. I don't know. It's a good name. Or maybe just some guy like sparrows. Like, we don't need to overthink this, right? Like, we need a name for the system. The first guy to get there. I had a pet sparrow. I'll name it sparrow. I don't know. It, the point is, uh, don't want to overthink this. Foundation? Eh, possible. I want to keep that for the rim. I think like that'd be funnier. But, uh, alright, let's get back to my long list here. And again, my apologies if it looks like I'm doing nothing. I'm just going through this list on the other monitor. Camelot, City and Arthurian Myth. Maybe Gomorrah, City and the Bible. Eh, probably not. Oh, Cyril, name of a Byzantine priest. That's kind of interesting. Cyril and Clark. Sparrow. I keep having names line up. Okay, maybe I gotta mix that up. Slovakian Mountain Range, Progress in Catalan. These are all great. Thanks to everyone who's been submitting names. Um, very much appreciated. Spanish for fire. Fuego. The Fuego system. I know that from Red Dawn. Afuante Fuego. Afuante Fuego. I, I assume Afuante is name because they're shooting American partisans during that scene. Swahili for sun, Botany Bay, Asimov, um, Cinder, maybe. Baccarat. Lioness, yeah, I, I like that. I kind of like the idea that this is like a, you know, it's, it's like a really crap part of the universe, but the names of the systems are all very kind of elegant and uh, nice sounding. And I'm not sure if I actually talked too much about this, but um, one of the ideas for the Golden Horn is that there's like two main ways into and out of the uh, OTO. You know, Route 1 would be here. New Canaan Corridor. Route 2 is here. And, or, no, not there. It would be here. And so you have this narrow route where these two really strong strings are like so close, but just that connection isn't there. So this is one of those places where if you want to save some time, you can go through the Golden Horn, but uh, the strings are bad, no one's patrolling them, so do it at your own risk. Lysander could work. Having American anarchists move through the area and name a system after U.S. anarchist Lysander. Um... I don't know if I want it to be named after that guy specifically, but I do like the name Lysander, so I will, yeah, let's throw that in there. And how about for the Clark system, the planets are names after authors, Asimov, Heinlein, etc. I'm not sure if they'd be that well thought out. Um, I definitely do want to include more author names. I think we had, I think in the original DOV classic, Heinlein was actually a pretty major system when we thought we were being clever, but maybe a bit too on the nose. All right.
What else do we got here? Danish word for seed. Cradle in Vietnamese. Oh, that's interesting. Cradle in Vietnamese. Well, we know for sure that um, people from Southeast Asia went through here, so that totally makes sense for there to be a Vietnamese named planet. So let's do... Oh, let's do this one. Kanoi. Yeah. If you're taking the, uh, the fast way through the new Canaan Corridor, you're going to end up in the independent port of Kanoi. I think that's rad as hell. And maybe we have uh, a Japanese name. Someone suggested the uh, the Japanese god of, uh, god of thunder, which sounds rad. Raijin. My question is, is this like too um, too obvious or too uh, like too popular? I guess. I'm not exactly sure how to articulate my fear. I guess what I'm trying to say is, like, is this reflective of um, Japanese culture and the popular mindset today? Or is this, like, Japanese culture being viewed through an outsider's lens and certain things are being emphasized over others? I hope, hopefully that makes sense. That, that's my concern. There's a name for that where some of the, like, where there where the, um, the most interesting parts of a culture are amplified over the less interesting stuff and you get like an incomplete picture of it. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? I feel like this is a thing. It's like how if you go to the, like an ethnic food store, you're not actually seeing all the time what people are actually eating. You're seeing like the crazy stuff. Whatever. I uh, will come back to that. Oh, and you know, I just realized we've been going for two hours here, so we have actually hit our time limit. So I'm going to save this. And let's bring back the old... Well, let's see if I did. I missed any super chats before we end things here. All right. Yeah. Okay. So we are going to end things here. If anyone has any last minute questions they want to get in, uh, now's your chance, I guess. But uh, thanks to everyone who's been popping in to join these streams. I'm really enjoying them. One of the things I'm kind of worried about, or at least thinking about, is... I always get self-conscious spending too much time working on one section of the map like this. I, I feel like I want to get as much done in these streams as possible, and yet I don't want to rush stuff. So I don't want to spend an entire stream like just moving planets around and trying to think of names. But you kind of got to do that stuff or else I'm not really being honest of what this process is like. So I guess I just want to set the uh, the expectation that not all these streams are going to be a wild ride, mile a minute kind of thing. Some of them might just be me, you know, moving stuff back and forth for 20 minutes. So, uh, them's the brakes. Did I, did I break that? What? There we go. Okay, so, questions, what do we got? Uh, what fonts are you using? I'll try to get through some of these questions. I can't do all of them. My apologies. If you have a burning question, hit us up on Discord. Uh... There's a bunch of places where you can submit questions. I, I try to be everywhere, so I appreciate your understanding here. What fonts are you using? Uh, this is Century Gothic. Uh, when we do our video on map design, I'm going to talk about fonts, because like everything, i got opinions about this stuff. But uh, if you're trying to make a space map, if you're trying to do anything sci-fi, don't fall into that trap of picking like a dumb sci-fi font where like the A's have no bar in the middle and everything looks stupid. Pick a readable font that looks modern and cool. That's my advice. Okay, next up. Uh, what program am I using? This is Adobe Illustrator. I don't know how to use it, but I'm trying to learn. You missed my super chat on civilian vessels, did I? I am sorry. Let me uh, go back. Uh, did I? I don't see it. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm, it might have just got lost in the system here. Uh, my apologies for that. But thanks for the super chat regardless. Hey, Mark, could you please make Krita a system? Please, the Olympia group is excited. Uh, Maybe, but I don't want to make decisions 
based on jokes that I'm not fully aware of just yet. So uh, it's it's in my head. I'll, I'll think about it. Just uh, I don't want to do it off the cuff like this before I really know what I'm doing here. Uh, would Brazil and India have their own internal factions in the non-aligned movement? Uh, yes. So the non-aligned movement is different from the other superpower, the other organizations in the sense that it's not a solid block. It's just like it's more of like a declaration of intent, if anything. It's it's nations coming together to say we don't want to be a part of the Cold War. But, you know, you can't always trust them. So Brazil might have its own geopolitical alliance it's trying to create like it might have its own thing. India might have its own thing. So just because both of these are in the non-aligned movement doesn't mean that they're not playing power politics. Uh, it's just saying that they're not uh, dedicated to one superpower over the other. So, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Any other really important questions? Is it legal for civilians to have offensive weapons on ships? So... Depends where you are, right? If you're in the local cluster, no way. Uh, you are not getting away with that. If you go into Sigma Draconis with like a missile launcher on your ship, you are getting arrested real fast. But, again, the rules are different as soon as you get to the edge. When you're on the frontier, yes, absolutely. Although, important thing when it comes to, uh, to space piracy and like that kind of thing, it always seems like a lot of science fiction discussions are like uh, the only thing preventing people from becoming space pirates is like a lack of weapons when really you need like t you need a an environmental kind of conditions for that to, to be a thing so it's not just the fact that civilians can get weapons that makes piracy a thing uh, even if it is important hopefully that answers some of that oh uh, what stops people from using FTL within systems to jump straight to the next cosmic string so this is something we kind of explain in our rundown here but the idea is that um, cosmic strings are extremely sensitive and you need kind of pristine conditions for an FTL drive to be able to utilize a cosmic string. So when you get further out from a system like here on the, on the edge, uh, you're able to detect the cosmic strings really well and you can jump. But once you're actually in a system, the gravitational pull of the sun or maybe radiation or, or something in systems is blocking your ability to detect cosmic strings. And it's only when you get further enough outside of them that you can actually jump to the next one. So some of them, they line up where like you can jump from here and then directly to here, but sometimes they don't line up, in which case you can go here, but then you gotta travel through the star system and then you can travel here. So it just depends on how the cosmic strings line up. Hopefully that uh, is an answer. Okay. Do the Sea of Clouds and get the easy stuff finished since you know it more. That, uh, it's, it's so tempting. But I kind of want to finish the local cluster. Like, I want to get the local cluster to the place where it's like, this is, is solid. And I think as soon as we get there, we're probably going to release, like, a limited edition poster. Um, showing what the, what the map uh, looks like, our first finished section. So, I want to get the local cluster done first. But yeah, the sea of clouds, it's calling me, baby. It is calling me. Uh, will there be any native star systems like Hawaiian or Native American? Yes, 100%. Um, there is a, uh, a balancing act here, because on the one hand, I, I think it's fair to say that if given the chance, some Native Americans or Aboriginal populations would, you know, create their own nations. But at the same time, you don't want to imply that these people aren't patriotic for whatever country they live in. So it, it's... um. It's, it's, it, there's some questions there. I don't know. Um, but yes, that's a thing. We had um, we had some Native American nations in the original Dawn of Victory, and they all had really cool names. <laughs> um, like I, we were using, I shouldn't talk about this too much, but uh, yeah, going through Native American names uh, from from history was really cool. Anyways, um, what do we got? Uh, will these pirate areas have any sort of political presence, or are they simply there to make certain space routes more dangerous? Yes, 100%. So, space piracy as a business is not that great a deal, right? Like, unless you're on the frontier, it's hard to make a living as a space pirate. So, part of the reason why this area is so fucked up is because certain governments really want it to stay fucked up. 
and you can probably guess who that might be. So 90% of the time, if pirates are operating in the local cluster or anywhere where there's like a lot of security, they are being helped by somebody. Uh, it's only in the frontier where you would actually have like quote unquote real pirates who are just going around stealing plunder. But uh, yeah, piracy in the core is different from piracy on the frontier. Sorry, a lot of questions here. I'm going to try to get to the, to the interesting ones and things that I feel like I can talk about, but uh, I don't want to spend too much time. I got I to gotta run here. Uh, what do we got? Uh, what do we else? What else? What else? What else? I saw one question here that was. Oh, yeah. Um, is France a strong ally of the OTO or is there some friction in the group? Yes, there is friction. In fact, uh, there is more friction in this version of the OTO than in real life NATO, because both France and the United Kingdom are much stronger relative to the United States than they are in our current reality. Um, so the Royal Navy might be as big, if not bigger, than the American Navy, to give you a sense of where we're at. Part of that's because the Americans are only now ramping up their uh, military industrial complex. They were isolationist for a while, but uh, not anymore. So. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, I think we'll call it there. I, I hope I answered some questions and gave you a sense of what's going on, but uh, this was a fun one. All right, so let's save this and bring back the old HUD. All right, everybody. So thank you all so much for joining me for session five in our world building series. I'm hoping my health is uh, is where I want it to be. I'm. I've, I'm feeling a lot better now than I was even the last stream, so I'm feeling this is pretty good. So, uh, if all goes well, we'll be doing this again next Wednesday, and until then, if you haven't already, be sure to check out the uh, the update we put out on the Dawn of Victory uh, YouTube channel. We mentioned in that video that we're, um, we're starting what I'm calling our second major world-building project. Our first major world-building project is what you're watching right now, which is the map of the Orion Arm. Our second one is dedicated to infantry in the uh, Orion Arm. So we are working with uh, Ian Lawrence Gibney, as you mentioned, I think at the start, and Battle Order to create military units from uh, from around the Orion Arm. So if you haven't checked out that video, there is a preview of what American infantry look like in this universe. So if you want to check that out, check out the video. It's all there. But uh, yeah, until next time, folks, uh, thank you all so much for being here, and uh, I'll catch you later.